And now, part two of a special presentation from Wood Chopping Time. Hello, fellow wood choppers. Chad here, and I'm with Safety Dan. Hey. Recently, I was asked to give a presentation on Chippendale style furniture for the Society of American Period Furniture Makers. That was part one. This is now part two. Did you say Chippendales? Yeah. I used to work for Chippendales. Oh my. The Philadelphia style, quite a bit different looking chairs. They were, they were considered to be the most sophisticated style of Chippendale. M most of the mahogany at the time was imported to Philadelphia. So of course, they're going to cherry pick it, right? And get the best stuff and then kick the rest of it off to the other boys. So uh, another reason that they had some of the nicest uh, furniture. Same leg off of a Philly chair. You can tell how much deeper the carving is. The, the knee is also wider. So here's a breakdown of their construction. The legs here are more round than the Boston one. They also tend to use that tenon that would come all the way through the back of the leg. The chair itself is wider. The construction of the corner, they used softwood, small little vertical pieces. This was another foot design besides the, uh, the ball and claw. And they, they believed it originated out of Ireland. Now this was a design, this came out in 1760. They felt that the, the cabriole leg was going out of style, out of fashion. So the, the Marlboro leg was introduced. And it's a, it's a straight leg. And no one really knows why it was named the Marlboro leg. Um, they believe it was named after uh, this guy. This is Sir Christopher Wren. He was the designer of the Marlboro House in England in 1711. Oh, so this, is, see, again, this is interesting to me because I thought, I thought they were named after this guy. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, yeah, that, that's my knowledge of what I'm doing here because, hey, let's face it, who doesn't enjoy a long, cool one from the Marlboro? This here was just kind of interesting. Uh, I got this out of one of the books. If you could read that scribble writing on there, it's actually better than mine. But this was a breakdown of a price list back then in 1772 out of Philadelphia. And it was actually kind of showing the pricing of the different features. For example, just a, a simple turned foot was the cheapest. The trefid foot was second higher. And then, of course, the ball and claw was the most expensive. Uh, mahogany was mostly used. But walnut was a cheaper option. In fact, they list it as about one-third cheaper. And then the shells on the knees were cheaper than the leaves on the knees. So if any of you guys want to sell your work, you can refer to the 1772 price listing guide. Uh, I like uh, it. Crooked legs. Yeah, crooked legs. <laughs> That's most of the furniture I build is crooked. So. And here's the, the, the high boy again, the features. The features on the high boy, of course, are the, uh, the scrolled pediments, acanthus sleeves, or flowers uh, at the top. It also used more of the quarter columns uh, on the case pieces. Uh, now I'm going to spotlight a little here on, on Rhode Island. This, this was actually, I had a lot of confusing information on this between Providence, Rhode Island, and Newport. One book would say this is the feature of here, and the other book would say it was. It, I had a lot of conflicting information, so um, what you see, if it's not right, is not my fault, okay? <laughs> the Rhode Island pieces were mostly known for the, the concave and convex shells that were on it. It was considered to be the highest degree of uh, refinement. The, the bracket feet had delicate scrolls, the urn finials with the corkscrew flame tops. Uh, the boxes on, on the tops were actually uh, really unique for, for that in Providence. And this, that was exactly the same. The boxes on top is the one that really gave me the most confusion because I found in other books it would say Newport and the boxes are on the top. Um, but clearly that's a, a unique feature in, in Rhode Island. So now see this is the Newport 
style. Those boxes are gone. Newport, they would put a board behind uh, the, the bonnet up there. Mixed feet too, ball Yes, yeah, that was, that's the other thing. Um, someone felt at the time, I read in, a, in one of the books that one of the, the thoughts was that they were trying to blend the Queen Anne with uh, the, the Chippendale. But actually, it, it turned out that was it. It, it turned out to be they're just being cheap about it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so no, you don't have anything unique there. You just got the cheap one in the bunch. So, <laughs> Bruce mentioned how the legs detached. This was a very unique. That was just a close-up of see how the leg was cut and applied to the, the backside of it. And this that we saw earlier, the Rhode Island Newport-style ball and claw, which which their big thing was having it carved, relieved like that. Next one. And of course, a, a Newport is famous for its knee hole desk. This I thought was really interesting. I, I had a stack of books. And what I was really kind of interested in was, like with the ball and claw, you know, the meaning, the symbolism behind it. And most of the books would never even touch on the symbolism of what was there and, and the shells was one that I found nothing. I found no mention of the symbolism of the shells in any of these books. I did though eventually figure out what the shells for the there's a lot of art historians in here at all. So no? Does anyone know what the shell means? What's that? No, actually this was well it could be, you know, I mean, here's the thing. You wonder how much is truth and how much is just story that they, they add to things. But the shell, especially the scallop shell, is what they think uh, Jesus was baptized with when they poured the water over his head. And people in, in Europe, when they would visit the, uh, make a journey to the Holy Land, they would come back and they'd either have palm branches or shells that they would wear. I guess maybe showing off to everyone, hey, I went to the Holy Land. You know, look at me. But that's what they would return with. And, of course, you know, the shell isn't anything new. It's in all kinds of, you know, architecture, uh, paintings, and so on. But, you know, it makes you wonder, was this one of the, the symbols that they used because our, our country is, you know, developing and the whole freedom of religion in that? Or was it just carried over because it was a popular art form? I don't know. But... So you're going around the, the whole country without leaving the room. So going up to New York, and what was unique about the, the New York chairs was they look a lot more square, you know, than the other ones. Just kind of plain and not as attractive. Uh, New York also really fancied the uh, gradruning. This one I want to show because uh, they said New York typically when they did their ball and claw, it looked more square. It just didn't have a lot of uh, depth or shape to it, and I thought this was a really good example, or at least maybe from the camera angle that they took it, but that one looks pretty bad to me. So the chests on chests were actually more popular in New York than uh, the high boys, so you would typically find those for sale. So that was, uh, that was uh, my presentation. I go to the next one, but there is a quiz <laughs> for this. I know this was painful, but since I had to do this, now you have to do it. <laughs> so, we'll we'll go to our first uh, our first question. Uh, so I'm starting off easy. Starting off easy on this one. Is it uh, A New York, B Boston, C Philadelphia, or D Toledo? Toledo. Toledo. <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead. The answer is Philadelphia. Yeah. So, uh, I got I got a couple for you. So this chair here. <laughs> This year we got uh, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, or Disneyland. Oh, we got we got some uh, question here. Who thinks it's who thinks it's uh, Boston? Yeah, who thought it was New York? Anyone there for Philly? Any Philly? Any Disneyland folks? <laughs> the answer is Boston. Boston. And then the last the last question. This, this, this is a tough one. Um, I mean, you guys got to put all the details together from today's presentation. Is it uh, New York, Boston, 
Philadelphia or Europa, the second of the Galilean moons. <laughs> so, this is a good one. Anyone want to guess on this? Man, look at you, your guys' faces are so funny because you're all like, mm, mm. you're really thinking on this one, aren't you? you know? All right, I'll give you the answer. Go ahead. Actually, it's a trick question. It was Connecticut there. <laughs> so I, just, I just wanted to see you guys suffer through this, you know. And you were. You were like, oh. You're really thinking hard. So, so these, uh, these were my primary books uh, that I used. And uh, and then the next one was just my, my secondary sources of books that I used. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was a rare performance that we've done for Chippendale style furniture. Come back next week and check out our regular quick tips. Chad, there's only one thing left for you to do. Oh yeah. It's time for me to dance.